Okay, we're live. Great to be here, folks. I'm Rob Tatro, uh, president and founder of the Canadian CMV Foundation. Welcome to another episode, our second episode, I guess, of the CMV Checkup. We're here, we're going to be here regularly throughout the month of June because June is CMV Awareness Month. Really exciting. We're getting it going. We're getting it started. CMV Awareness Month, the month of June is happening. I've been liking and following all this stuff on Instagram and on Twitter and on uh, Facebook page. You should be too. If you're watching this now live on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Click the red button, subscribe. If you're watching this live on uh, Facebook, please like and follow. Uh, we, we always want to hear about, uh, we want to hear from you and we, we'd love to get your comments on it as well. So today on our second episode of the CMV Checkup, we're bringing in a parent. Uh, I'm going to bring her in right away. I'm going to add her to the show. Side by side, let's go. Let's go like this. All right, great to see you, uh, Lindsay. There's the tag for me, Rob Tatro. Uh, Lindsay Craig from, uh, well, just outside of Calgary, CMV mom and advocate. Great to see you, Lindsay. Hi. Yep. Hey, all right. Um, you're, that'd be what, your home? You're at your home right now? Yeah. You've been working from home a lot lately? or? Yeah, since mid-March. Yeah, like all of us, I guess, eh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how's, the, uh, how's the mood out in Calgary with respect to COVID? Um, I think it's getting, it's more positive now. Um, there's employers are getting ready to bring people back to work. So we're getting there. Good. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you are, uh, so on Sunday, Michelle and I told our story, uh, our parents story about CM virus. Uh, we told kind of what happened to us and our son Alexandre 12 years ago. Check out the show. If you haven't seen it, check it out on YouTube, check it out on Facebook. Uh, today you are our first other parent to joining the CMV checkup. Uh, I'd love to know. I'm, I'm thankful for you to be here, but I'd love to know um, your story. So let's go back to the early days. Uh, you have Madison, who's two now, if I if I recall. How was it like initially when you found out that your daughter had uh, CM virus? Um, it wasn't the typical. We didn't find out the typical way that lots of people find out. So she was diagnosed with a hearing loss after birth. Um, and then we were given an appointment to visit an ENT. It was probably four to six months down the line to find out a cause for, for her hearing loss. She had a unilateral hearing loss. So it was just on one side, which um, isn't as common. And so if you have a genetic hearing loss, it's more common than not that it's bilateral. So I didn't like, and we didn't have any hearing loss in our family. So I had like, I, it com came completely out of the blue and we didn't really know why. So, and that was at what, how old, how old was she, how old was she at that point where you found out she had the hearing loss? Um, she was probably about four weeks old. Okay. So this is like the kind of newborn screening program. Yeah. Yeah. So that, at that time it was still a pilot. Um, and now they've since brought it in. It's universal across Alberta. Um, but she such, was still such a no brainer by the way, to do universal yeah. hearing screening and such a no brainer yeah. to do universal yeah. screening. Yeah, so with Madison as well, because it was unilateral, there's no way we would have caught it. And you still can't tell a difference today that she has a hearing loss. So I'm super thankful for that because it led us down this road and it led us to the path to get treatment for her. Um, so I started to research causes of hearing loss and an article came up from Dr. Soren Gant, who was talking about C the CM virus and CMV and how it can cause hearing loss. And I remember sitting there one evening reading and I was talking to my husband and he was like, and I was like, this could be a cause and we're like great so if this is, is a cause then it's likely that she'll continue to lose her hearing because without treatment she will like treatment has proven to help improve hearing outcomes and so if she doesn't get access to that and if we don't get that diagnosis then she'll continue to lose her hearing so in that article as well it spoke to how you have to test for cm virus within the first three weeks of life because otherwise you don't know if you've gotten it after birth. And so I thought we had lost our opportunity altogether and that we weren't going to ever know if it was from the CM virus. And so, but it just, it was something that I felt made sense, right? Because we had a toddler in the house as well. And toddlers tend to be very high carriers of, this, of the virus. And I ate off her plate a lot because we were rushing out the door and I was just finishing up her breakfast and we ran out the door and we were also potty training her at the same time. So it just, it, in my heart, it made a lot of sense. And so I started Wait, contacting so how, how, how old was, was Madison at this point? Like how long in, in is this? And 
Um, it's hard to say because, like, I, it, like, I was still accepting and I think grieving the loss of her hearing loss, and so it was like it, like, it was very blurred time, I think. Um, and so it was probably, it was probably about like four weeks. No, it was probably more like two months in. Okay. So we had like a family meeting with the children's hospital. And then after that, I started doing more research because I thought at that family meeting that we would be able to find out more information as to her, like as to why she had a hearing loss. Um, and so, yeah, it was probably about four weeks to two months afterwards. Um, and then I started reaching out to people just in the, in the CMB world and a volunteer from the National CMB Foundation told me to get her newborn dry blood spot card tested. And I didn't, I had no idea that was even an option. So it's the heel prick that they do to test for metabolic disorders when they're first born. Um, and I didn't even know if it was still available. So I called our midwife and our midwife called the lab and the lab sent it or told, gave her directions and was, and we were able to send it off to Ontario where they have the universal screening. So then after it took, it only took about two, three weeks. And then we were able to get a positive diagnosis. Um, and I, so that this is leading up to the moment that we found out about that she had a C, that she had CNB. It was just a phone call and I was on my couch and like the midwife called and said, she's positive for CNB. And since, and once we got her tested, I had started doing more research about CMV and I like got onto Facebook pages and I um, did a little bit more research and I and I knew that the outcomes for kids with CMV, it varied so greatly. So it was, it was very overwhelming, I think, because like I saw other kids who were, like who were more severely impacted by CMV. And so like, it just, it was very overwhelming because I had no idea what, this meant for her future and for her outcomes and for her development. It's one of the, it's one of the things that got Michelle and I to, 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 to put so much work into this is that there's so much anxiety for parents when, when you're kind of going through this and when you're finding out, you know, you're thinking, what could this be? I have no idea. No one has explained this to me. No one's talking to me. I'm just Googling and I'm seeing all sorts of crazy stuff and that's all I know. And you end up just going through a period that's really emotionally it's a like you're a wreck during that emotional time and then you get the diagnosis and then you're like okay you know what's going to happen to my kids so it's it, i think it's a huge point that you're bringing up right now that there's such a wide scale and there's mm -hmm. such a lack of information i would say of good information about this uh, which is one of the reasons cmv canada is doing everything we're doing so you get the phone call mm -hmm. you get the phone call and then i guess at that point she's she's several months old now i would imagine yeah, it was August. So it was three, four months old. Three, four months old. So uh, at that point, um, you know, what what happened then? She obviously she didn't get treated. Not right off. Not right away. So then, I um I was trying to scramble to like I knew there was no. So I contacted Soren again, and he he sent me an article about um babies getting treated past that three week window. And then that is what, like, cause I thought like I did treatment wasn't even something that I was thinking of. And then, and then I realized, Oh, she could get treated and we could potentially like preserve a bit of hearing potentially and maybe improve like other developmental outcomes. So then I got, a, I saw her, our family doctor to get a referral to infectious disease. And then we saw infectious disease at the Alberta children's hospital who then gave us treatment. And that happened within the span of like three, four days. Cause I, I knew she needed to get access to this treatment as soon as we could. It was, I was borderline in flight or flight mode, right? Like you're a mom trying to get your child treatment, right? So. Yeah, I, I know that there are doctors, and I mentioned this on the show on, on mm -hmm. Sunday, but there are many doctors in Canada and the US and globally that are now treating much yeah. into three months, six months. Uh, I know there's some at that CHEO, I know there's some at the uh, in the Ontario hospitals that are treating much later. And anecdotally, they're convinced that um, there is a positive impact. Now, I don't I don't know how many studies have been done on that. And maybe we'll bring one of those on the show and they could chat about it. But anecdotally, in their opinion, I know some that stand by it religiously. You treat even if you find out at three months. And I'm glad that uh, Madison did get the treatment. Yeah. So uh, what happened after then? It would, it would have been oral, I would imagine, oral gancyclovir, so a valgancyclovir. Yep. 
Yeah, and then we so we started doing weekly blood tests, and then once she that was once we knew that she was tolerating the drug well, we went to monthly blood tests because the so the drug it's essentially like a cancer drug, right? It kills a lot of cells, so we had to make sure that it wasn't killing the cells that were helping her fight off infections. So um, yeah, she tolerated well, and everything went well. For those of you that are watching that are new, uh, Gancyclovir back in the day, which my son got, uh, and now Valgancyclovir, which is the oral version of the treatment, is the kind of widely accepted and commonly accepted treatment um, for uh, congenital CMV infections. Typically, uh, the book says you typically treat before four weeks so that you know it's congenital. But in your case, they knew it was a congenital infection because they had the dried blood spot from birth and it was three, four months and they treated anyways. I'm glad to hear that. But basically, Valgancyclovir and Gancyclovir, decades old studies that have been done uh, and there is a, such a dramatic improvement in the treated children. Um, so if you're watching this and somehow this you, you have a child with CMV and he or she is rather young, uh, and they've been diagnosed and this hasn't been brought up by all means, please bring it up with uh, your physician or your infectious disease specialist. Although nowadays it's not like it was when my son was born 12 years ago where, you know, he was the first one. Uh, they told us he was the first one in Manitoba treated with uh, Gansaiclavir. Now I think it's much more common. So uh, how's, how's Madison doing now? She's doing really well. She just turned two. Um, she's a normal toddler. <laughs> She's learning how to be a toddler, that's for sure. She, she has tantrums and stuff, but it's like, it's so different now. I think something like this and knowing that your child's outcome could have been so different, it really changes your perspective on the tantrums, right? You, you, you're grateful for them, honestly. Yeah, I'm grateful for the work that you've done, Lindsay. Uh, I got to know you, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, I'm guessing here, but kind of as you were, I, I think, coming out of this. Um, mm -hmm and you decided to get involved with CMV Canada. You want to talk a bit about how you decided to get involved with us and, and the work that you're, you're doing now? Yeah, so, I mean, one thing led to another, really. Someone at the Children's Hospital put me in touch with a mom who put me in touch with another mom who put me in touch with you, really. Um, there's other parents in Alberta who um, are advocating as well, and so I was pretty, like, aggressive with her, I suppose, in, in, in trying to, to share with her that we, like, this is... A very large injustice that we do for mothers and parents um, and we need to, and children um, and that we need to get these kids access to care and and to advocate for awareness and so we were talking about doing something more local um, and then in that we started talking to you and we really realized how much like we really need to just work on this nationally and so we've joined forces and are working together yeah, I'm thrilled to have you on my team, Lindsay. You're uh, you're just such a pleasure to work with, and you're you're such a a great advocate for the cause that is uh, you know changing status quo for CMV. You and I worked together on the um, the advocacy piece in Alberta. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Kind of what happened this year and last year, and how that's progressing, and what is the goal in Alberta? Maybe we should start with that. Universal screening. Yeah. <laughs> so every baby, every baby gets tested. Yeah, so that is the goal. For those of you that are watching this for the first time, if you don't know, we are positioned and it's extremely strong and backed by any data you'll see is that it is cost effective. We can improve the outcomes of babies. We know we can identify them. We know we can treat them. We know we can improve their outcomes. We know we can uh, reduce parent anxiety and we know we can improve the outcomes of kids. It's a no brainer to get universal screening. It's our view that every province and territory in the country needs to have universal screening. It started in Ontario. It's going to happen in every province. You're working on Alberta. So tell us about what's happening in Alberta. Yeah. So it, this is another story of one thing led to another as well. My husband, he contacted the ministry of health and we were able to have several meetings with them and to discuss the merits of universal screening with them. And they're really on board with us. And then that was able to, we, that led us to having a meeting with um, Alberta health services where they heard our, I guess, proposal on universal screening and all the different arguments for universal screening. Um, and then they had talked about, there was a couple of tangible follow-ups that they gave us and some pretty real things that they could act on and then COVID happened to us. And so we're hoping, we're hoping that um, they'll pick up where they left off. Yeah. And, and why in your mind, so specific to your situation, why do you think screening is so important? I mean, it's different for all parents. And I think 
I mean, my son is 12, so screening is not going to help him because he's 12 and, you know, he's going to junior high next year and there's nothing we can do for him. And same with Madison. But why do you why do you think that out of it, that screening is so important relative and use your example as to, to tell us why? Yeah, there's a, a number of reasons why. So, I mean, if it wasn't so I was fortunate enough to get an education where I learned how to read studies right and so I was able to do that research for myself but if there are parents out there who don't understand the healthcare system and who can't navigate for themselves and who don't who can't advocate for themselves as well they they might not ever get that diagnosis and they might not never know and that diagnosis is personal and it's up to them to find out um but like screening would just help like it would allow parents to know a reason behind differences their children may or may not have. Yeah, I mean, Madison Madison was missed, right? Yeah. Madison yeah. was missed. So if I, yeah. So if I hadn't have done that and I hadn't have done the research, then she wouldn't have never gotten, she never would have gotten treatment. And so- yeah. like, To me, that's like the screaming. Daughter. Yeah. It's like a screaming reason why we need to have universal screening. Like your daughter was missed. If it mm -hmm. wasn't for you and the incredible work you did, your daughter was missed. And we know that 90% of symptomatic babies are currently being missed. Yeah. Yeah. And symptomatic, like, and yeah. So fair. Um, and we know that if she was missed as well, that she would have gone on to lose hearing, right? And so, and there are also babies who are born who are completely asymptomatic who go on to lose hearing and they don't know why, right? Parents don't know why and children don't know why they've lost their hearing. And I guess you would agree with me in saying that knowing as a parent, First of all, we mm -hmm. have the right to know. Mm -hmm. we, we should know we have the right to know. And second of all, being able to watch for that, you'd probably agree is, is, would be huge for parents. If you have an asymptomatic baby, so a baby that is not exhibiting symptoms at birth, but is still positive for CMV, congenital mm -hmm. CMV. And we know that 15 or 20% of these are going to develop long-term hearing loss. As parents, we'd want to know that. We'd want to watch for that. We'd want to have regular interventions. We'd want to, and if we can catch it early, then we can treat or, or treat or, you know, cochlear implants or whatever yeah. it may be intervention, right? Yeah. Get them access. Yeah. Get them access. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to see happen or, or change in the next, next few years, maybe start with Alberta or, or, and, and where do you see the future of uh, CMV, CMV advocacy? Yeah. Um, Alberta universal screening for sure. <laughs> if we can get that going. But it's not just about Alberta, right? It's about, I think, a standard of care of access for all Canadians, right? So Ottawa, Ottawa or Ontario universally screens for that. So I think that, that should be standard of care across Canada. And I think along with that, we should have specialists who are educated and who can provide care for the parents who have children, well, for the children who are affected by CMV. So that means like, knowledgeable infectious disease specialists, your nose throat specialists that, that know about it, speech pathologists that get it, that know about it, audiologists that have an idea about it, ophthalmologists that know, that have outcome ideas, right? When we saw our ophthalmologist, she's like, I, I, like, I know this is like, so CMV can also affect the eyes and affect the retinas, retina. And so she was just checking, but like you could tell that she wasn't confident in it. And so, like I think universal access and universal care in all the different practitioners that would help take care of your CMV child. Yeah, it's really neat what they're doing in Montreal at the um, Centre Infection Mère Enfant, I believe it's called the SIM. Uh, so basically it's a kind of one stop, all aspects of treatment for CMV in one great, really neat clinic. Uh, Dr. Fatima Kakar is working there and uh, Dr. Isabelle Boucarin. There's, there's some really good doctors that are working there. And it's all kind of in-house at the same space. So everyone knows about CMV and the infectious diseases. I think that's like the gold standard. And I think it, it'd be really neat to have infectious disease centers like that in every city. I understand there's financing issues, financial issues and stuff like that. But hey, we got universal screening in Ontario. Every single baby born in Ontario is being screened, which brings me to the situation. So Manitoba, we're on the border of Ontario. A baby is born at Falcon Lake on one side of the border and a baby's born on Kenora, the other side of the border, and that baby's got a better outcome just because he's born on the other side of the border it makes absolutely no sense, and then it needs to change. So I'm glad that you think it's going to change uh, in the future. Um, 
anything else you want to add about your story or you want to share? You want to, you want to. Um, no, I like, I don't think so. I think, I think for parents who, who like, who are getting this diagnosis, I think like, and I think this is something that we can all relate to right now with COVID is that the uncertainty is the hardest part. And I think learning to accept that uncertainty and not know and not like, and learning to live with it, I think is probably the hardest part about getting a CMV diagnosis. Cause you don't really know what the outcomes of your children are going to be. And like, and so it's very easy to go down that rabbit hole and try to predict it and come up with the worst case scenarios. And it just, I don't think it does any parent who's been diagnosed with C with a child with CMV any help. I know we went, we went through that same experience cause you're thinking this is a possibility. Oh my God. What if that happens? And you're just going down the yeah. rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, it's, Pretty amazing, uh, Lindsay, the work that you've done uh, with CMV Canada, the Canadian CMV Foundation. For those of you that are parents out there and you're not sure how to get involved, you don't know what to do, first of all, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, uh, go to the Facebook page, like and follow. If you're a parent and you want to share your story or you want to get involved, please send us a comment, send us a Facebook note, go to the website, uh, cmvcanada.com. There's a neat contact form there you could fill out. We'd love to hear your story. If you, you're thinking that Lindsay's got a ton of energy and you don't quite have that much energy, that's fine. We need all sorts of different level of parents who want to get involved. For you to get involved with a six month old at home, Lindsay is was just uh, fantastic. Um, you know, I had a six month. I, I certainly wasn't thinking of what you're thinking, and I'm, I'm I applaud you. Right? Like I think I was just so mad that she wasn't like we had no idea. We were just given this diagnosis, and then we were seen off, and it was just that was that. And I was like okay, like they deserve more care than that. So I think that's yeah. probably where it came from. Status quo is unacceptable, right? No, yeah, it, yeah, very unacceptable. Yeah, so if you're a parent out there, we're raising money, we're establishing provincial chapters, uh, we wanna hear your story. We need parents that are gonna be on the ground and advocating. We need parents that are gonna be on the ground and speaking with the healthcare professionals. Um, if, if you're a parent and you're watching this and you want to get involved, you can get involved in any or all of those ways. We've raised a lot of money at the Canadian CMV Foundation. I think we've raised almost $700,000 um, in the time that we've started. So uh, there's a, there's money that that is, is being distributed now as grants and as research. So there's a lot of positive momentum that's happening. Thanks to parents like Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, I'm going to thank you for your time today. If there's, if there's not anything else, I want to thank our viewers for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. We do have much more coming on the CMV checkup in the month of June, CMV Awareness Month. Uh, don't forget to go to our to to like our page and for, and remember uh, hashtag uh, Stop CMV and hashtag uh, CMV Awareness. Thanks so much for tuning in, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank have you. a great day, everyone.